Now we're ready to start working on the back panel for the cab. And this is the piece that will go on top of here. Now in the cutting guide it says to cut the back panel from medium weight chipboard and the dimensions are 4 and 3 quarters by 6 and 5 eighths. But it also says to check dimensions before cutting. And that means to take your ruler and measure from this very bottom part all the way to the tip. And that for me is the 6 and 5 eighths. So I know my height is 6 and 5 eighths. And then we want to measure across between the two little pieces of chipboard that stand up here and double check that measurement and mine is four and three quarters there. So I know that I'm going, the measurements in the cutting guide will work for me and I'm going to cut a piece of medium weight chipboard that's four and three quarters by six and five eighths. So here's my piece of chipboard that I've cut and the first thing I want to do is turn it on the side and measure down a half an inch from the top. And I'll just make two tick marks on the edges. And then I'll find my center point. And mark a tick mark there. And then we just want to join those marks and cut off those angles. So I'll do that and then I'll be back. And then once we have those angles cut, we can take our piece and hold it and get it aligned here with the top and then what you want to do is make a tick mark just on the top of of where the thick uh, sideboard side platforms come on both sides so I'll do that and then I'll join a line across and then to see how far in we need to cut and make these notches I'm just going to measure across here at the bottom and I have three and three quarters. So since my piece here is four and three quarters wide, I can just take a half an inch notch off of the either side. So I'll just mark that and I'll remove that and do the same on the other side. And then check it for fit. It should fit in between here. If it wants to hang up just a little bit, either take a sliver off or use an emery board. And then right here, when I put this side platform in, it overhung just a little bit. So I had to take out just the tiniest little bit of notch there so that that would fit. So. Just make any little adjustments that you might have to do. You want this to fit in between here, but it should go, uh, it should fit in nicely, but not be so that you have to force it in. So now that I have my um, back piece cut to size, I'm going to use this as a template to cut two pieces of cardstock one out of black which will be the exact size of the piece of chipboard and then one out of craft and it will be the same size everywhere except it will be a half an inch longer on the bottom so that craft one has the half an inch extension the black one is the exact size so I'll get those two pieces cut and then I'll be back so on the craft one, we want to cut a slit and the placement of this slit is it starts one inch up from the bottom. It's centered side by side and then it is two and three quarters inches long. So one inch up from the bottom, centered and then two and three quarter inches long. So I'll cut that slit. So now I've added some score tape as you can see around on the back side here. This is my central slit right here 
and I've put um, both a half an inch and a one quarter inch wide piece there so I'll have about three quarters of an inch wide of a score tape on either side of that slit and then I want to do a little scoring up from the bottom remember how we left that half an inch uh, overhang so I'm going to score it a half an inch and then I've marked um, a one and one half inch wide space here and that's just from the center line I made a couple of tick marks that were three quarter inch on either side of the center line and then I'm going to score that at five eighths of an inch just in between those two two lines now that's not absolutely necessary but it will help when we go to fold that around and then I'm just going to erase these tick marks and so now that's our uh, paper prepped and then on the box itself I've taken score tape around these edges here so our goal is to put this piece on here and then where this slit is we'll wrap it to the inside of the opening for our box so I'm going to start this by just removing the score tape on the bottom flap here and then I can fit it in get it all lined up here properly and then I can fasten down that bottom piece and I'll go ahead and give that a burnish as well so now that we have that bottom attached then we know that we can safely remove all of this score tape and when we go to set it in it's going to fit just perfectly inside of there so I'm going to get all of my backing removed and then I think you can see I've added just a thin line of wet glue around each one of the magnets I just like to have a little extra insurance there and then I'll just put this down and burnish it in place and then I'll see if I can catch this in the light what I've done here is after burnishing I used my bone folder to kind of press along where the edges of that opening are so I can see where they are and what I want to do is from that slit cut to the corner now you can use some scissors or you could use your craft knife whatever you're the most comfortable with and just go until you hit that corner so repeat that for all four of these slits and then once you've made those slits go ahead and just push in and go ahead and give those tabs a good burnishing so now we're ready to add the magnets to our outside piece of chipboard and I'm going to do this in two stages I think these magnets are super strong and I might have had the best success if I put a piece of like thin chipboard in between where I want to have the magnets and then these magnets are will seek out their their mates 
and so they found their place. Now I have magnets that are self-adhesive. They have a little adhesive on the back. If you don't have that, then you just put a little drop of like a glossy accents or something on there. Make sure you just use a, a, a tiny drops because you don't want it to overflow. And then um, doing it two at a time allows you to, to use the other side to make sure you get the um, I'm I'm tilting it in on sorry on this side and I have it lined up there and now I can just press it down and I can put some good pressure on those magnets and then I have to do it this way. And then I can carefully hold on to this piece of chipboard here, the, the thin piece that I've got right there, and I'll just try to pick it directly up. So now we can add the magnets to the other side, and I'm just going to protect these two with a spare piece of scrap cardstock, and then go ahead and put my piece of chipboard over on this side. This is that lightweight piece of chipboard, and let these two magnets find where they want to go, and then I can take this piece and now I'll align it to this edge that's closest to me and then press down and get the other two magnets in place. So now I have all four magnets in place. And now I'm just going to take a minute and put some black ink uh, around the edges and then just come up a little bit on both sides. Um, we're not going to wrap this at all and so I just want to make sure that the edges are as finished as nicely as possible. This is the paper I've selected to go on the back panel and I'm going to be cutting a circle in it and I going to place it on uh, this paper uh, so that I kind of avoid some of these uh, stronger elements. So what I'm doing is measuring down 5 eighths of an inch from the top of the, of the paper and then that's where I'll put my piece of the, the back panel and I'll trace around that and get that cut out. I'm going to cut a circle in the back that is three and three quarters inches wide. So this is a, a circle cutting uh, die that I have on here. And I've just spaced it equally from side to side. I'm just going to use a little low tack tape to keep that in place. And then I can run that through the die cutting machine. And then also I've got piece of black card stock and I'm going to center, this is a, a three and a half inch die and I'm going to bring this down about an inch from the top and center it side to side. This, is, this piece of paper is cut at four and three quarters just like the top width of that. So I'm going to center this die side to side and hold it back from the top about an inch and get those two things cut out. So I've got my two um, circles cut out and I'm just going to layer these so that I get a nice even reveal going all the way around and then I'll trim off the excess black and then I'll be back. And then to go in the center of our circle I'm going to use this element from here. So I'm just going to cut out, cut it out, and I'm being careful because I'm probably going to use this element somewhere so I don't want to cut into that. So uh, just come, I think I'll 
look for this reveal here of the, the gear that's behind her face and try to keep that even as I go around and just adhere that to the back of our piece. So here's my back panel and I've put some score tape on uh, the sections that didn't have any stick it and then I'll just go ahead and get it lined up and adhere, adhere it to the outside of my back panel. And then I'm going to use a little hitch fastener as a knob here below the um, decorative element so that we'll be, have a way to uh, pull the uh, back panel off. And I'm just going to center it, of course, left to right and probably bring it down. I would say the center this way will be about 3 eighths of an inch below the the black rim there and um, I need an eighth inch hole I think for this hitch fastener so I've got a, a big bite um, a punch that will reach in and do that if you don't you could use an awl and just clean that up and that's the reason we haven't put our our back panel on yet so that we can if we uh, have to do any work on the back here and also to cover up the fastener at the end. So I'll get that hole punched and then I'll be back. So now I have my hitch fastener attached and I'm going to finish up by putting trim around the edges here. I'll probably take my black marker first Just kind of come up on, be carefully on the edge along here, just in case um, any of that green would want to show through as I trim around these edges. So I'll get that accomplished. So I finished adding the trim all around my edges here, and I've prepped the back with score tape and so that I can go ahead and put the black card stock on here and after I remove my backing I'll just put a little ring of glue around each of the magnets just like I did um, on when we covered the end of the locomotive. So I'll get that accomplished. So here is my finished back panel. I have the black cardstock attached and then you can see that it fits nicely inside that end.